coming up, we just live in the moment. We just love exploring life. But you just don't want this life to end. No. Could death be curable? There's a magic temperature at minus 130. Can't wait. The Aussies joining a worldwide movement. Nicer than a coffin. To live forever. Two hour window to deploy our team anywhere in the world. But be warned, there's a catch. They've got the technology to put us in, but they haven't quite figured out how to bring us out yet. Cryonics. Is it a science or nonsense? There's an enormous amount of wishful thinking. For as long as mankind has been capable of thought, we've known the truth about life is that it ends in death. But as our scientific knowledge increases, there are more and more believers, optimists if you like, who think humans will soon be clever enough to halt the inevitability of mortality. Others, of course, will never be convinced that living forever is either possible or desirable. They say the idea death could one day be considered a curable disease is a nonsense. Advocates, though, claim it's actually so close, now is the time to start getting ready for life after life. Alan and Barbara Peace don't know what the future holds, but they're certain about one thing, they don't want to end up here. After 35 years of wedded bliss, they've decided till death do us part isn't long enough. They want their love story to continue into eternity. Seeing you two together and seeing the way you live, you have a fantastic life. So well, we do want more you... of it. That's so... the point, isn't it? We want more, want more of it. We can't, can't imagine giving it up. So no, death doesn't, I don't, we don't think about it. We just live in the moment and um, enjoy every second. Enjoy our kids, our grandkids, ourselves. We, we just love exploring life. But you just don't want this life to end. No. Well, reality is it will, but there'll be the next life, whatever that may be. And it's, it's the unknown to a large extent because we don't really know what it'll be. But a conventional burial or cremation won't allow them to find out, leaving just one option. They've signed up to be cryopreserved at Australia's first ever cryonics facility. They've got the technology to put us in, but they haven't quite figured out how to bring us out yet. Uh, and there's always a risk, but the alternative is eternal blackness. I mean, there's not an alternative for us. And you've got a deal, don't you, to stay together? Well, when we come back, the deal is when they unfreeze us, when they finally worked out how to do it, which we don't know when that'll be. 20 years, best hope, 60, 70, 80 years. But the deal is if one of us doesn't unfreeze properly, they'll pull the plug on the other because neither of us want to really do it on our own. I mean, I don't want to come back without her. I don't decision. want to come back without him either. Yeah. When the time comes for each of them, their bodies will make a final journey from their home in Queensland's Sunshine Coast hinterland to the small country town of Holbrook, halfway between Sydney and Melbourne, where Southern Cryonics owner Peter Solakides is almost ready to open the doors after 14 years of planning. We're at a stage where if we had to do a patient tomorrow, we could do it. It would be our first one, but we could do it. We have uh, members who are, the, who are in their 80s and late 80s. We have to assume that within the next year or so, something will happen. It's a lovely old country town, but um, it's perhaps an unlikely place for a cryonics facility. Mm -hmm. Why Holbrook? We spent many years trying to find a location. We were looking for a place, low earthquake, low fire danger, low flood danger. They were the important things. In this 100 square metre concrete shed, bodies will be cooled to sub-zero temperatures. Then they'll be put into a tank like this one, where they could spend hundreds of years until science and technology evolves to somehow bring them back to life. How confident are you that science will exist? I'm at somewhere between the, um, let's say the 20%, 20, 30%. That's quite high. That's my thinking at the moment. It's a long shot, but Alan and Barbara think there's very little to lose. 
cries like if you're on an aeroplane flying over the Alps. The captain comes on and says, unfortunately, the engines are all conked out. We're going to crash in the next 15 minutes. However, we do have on board experimental parachutes. They've never been used. We've worked on them for years. We think they're going to work. And even if you bail out and hit the ground, we don't know what's down below, would you take the parachute? You'd take the parachute. Everybody says, yeah, I'll take the parachute. Well, that's what cryosuspension is. It's a parachute. Let me show you a little bit of Brown, what we're doing. Uh, well, look at him. Yeah. Well, that's so our, far, that's 50 our, Australians, from doctors to bus drivers, in their 30s to their 80s, have paid $150,000 to secure a spot here. This is what we call the cooling chamber. The importance is that we need to bring them down to liquid nitrogen temperature very slowly. Alan's visiting Holbrook keen to see what his future holds. In here would take five to six hours of getting it down to the, to the right temperature. Can't wait. I can't I'm wait. I'm volunteering, but I can't <laughs> yeah. wait. Yeah. Don't hurry. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got you as our first at all, so uh, don't hurry. There's only one tank here right now, but the plan is to fill the shed with them. Each tank will hold four bodies. It's only when you have a really good look down into one of these tanks that the reality of all this hits home. To spend potentially eternity frozen, strapped upside down, alongside strangers, seems an extreme and bizarre decision. What do you think when you, when you go to that shed and you have a look inside and they're tinkering with all the final bits and bobs? And I look at it and I think, well, we're going to be here for a long time, but we won't know. We won't know we're going to be there. It'd be just like going to sleep. Hmm. And uh, whether it's 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, or however long it takes, it'll, be, it'll feel like five minutes. And if something goes wrong and we don't come out of it, well, we won't know. It's an unlikely sort of a, a symmetry, isn't it? Yeah. I want a photo of Alan and I on our little cylinder <laughs> so the kids can go, hi, Mum. I wanted to put a glass window in so I could have our eyes up <laughs> smiling, looking out. Uh. <laughs> but this is serious business. Today, Alan's watching a liquid nitrogen supply test into the cooling chamber. You put over the entire body. Yeah. Do you think about if you came back and some of your children were gone? The world's a different place. I mean, is that appealing to you? Look, I think the world will definitely be a different place, but I, I, I'm excited by that. To actually come back and have our babies and grandbabies here would be amazing. But even if they chose not to, there would still be descendants of ours. And even we knew nobody, so why? As long as we've got each other. It, they like exploring, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Pioneers. On the other side of the world, American Kim Swosey wanted to be a pioneer too. Diagnosed with brain cancer at just 23, the budding neuroscience student chose to be cryopreserved. It's not that I'm scared of dying, but I don't want to die knowing that I could have done something more. For her boyfriend, Josh Sisler, memories of Kim's sudden diagnosis are still incredibly raw. It was like a pretty big shock. Then they basically told her she was going to die in two years. We discussed cryonics like pretty immediately, just because it was something we had already established like throughout college. As But at that point, it's just theoretical, right? You're not thinking you're going to die. But Kim was dying, and cryopreservation isn't cheap. The Alcor Life Extension Facility in Arizona charges up to $300,000. So she turned to the internet to raise the funds. I, I can't say it enough how thankful I am for everybody who's given to me so far. I'm totally, totally shocked by the response that I've had from both my friends, my family, and the crime community. Less than two years later, in 2013, Kim and Josh made a final journey to the cryo building. She declined, like, really rapidly. So I was scared that... I got really scared that she was going to die before we got there. It was really good to get here and to be here, and it was, like, the last leg of a, of a horrible journey. Yeah. Um, and I guess you felt 
safe in a way. You had the team, the plan was in place. Right, and right. She, she was going to be able to right. do what she wanted. Yeah. Kim got her dying wish suspended in liquid nitrogen for who knows how long. But 11 years since her death, the science of cryonics remains unproven. No one has been revived yet. And as you'll see, there's no evidence it can be done. I remain to be convinced that it's anything other than an extreme expression of wishful thinking. On the outskirts of Phoenix in Arizona sits the world's longest running cryonics facility, Alcor Life Extension Foundation. Well, this is really impressive. James, how many people, patients do you have in here? We have approximately 200, uh, a little more than that, and people from all walks of life, uh, different ages. You know, different, different circumstances, different nationalities all over the world. James Arrowwood is co-CEO of Alcor and a paying member, which means when he dies, he'll be stacked in one of these enormous steel and aluminium tanks called duars. Each one holds four bodies and, as grim as it sounds, several decapitated heads, because some people choose to preserve only their brains in the hope that one day, science may be able to engineer them a new body. It's scary, but you're part of history. And if we're successful, even in part, you make history, then your body contributed to that. Do they genuinely believe they might walk this earth again? There are some people that are convinced this is going to work. And then there are other people who are saying, well, it's probably not going to work, but I want my, my brain in particular, because we do brain research. We scan the brains, we see how this all works together. Uh, sorry, that's bleed off. We, we, when you're in a lab, you get these interesting noises sometimes, but that's actually liquid nitrogen uh, diffusing off a tank. And so there's a That's, an that's supposed to happen. In that, there's an animal in that tank? <laughs> that probably has some small, uh, rare, near extinct chinchillas, actually, I think is what they are, but uh, yeah. So that's a small animal, probably, okay. yeah. They're fine, though. They're OK. It's almost like we're on the set of a kooky science fiction movie. But the residents entombed here are real. And this is their sombre resting place. And how long will these patients be in the tanks? Well, the, the good news is, is that the storage here can be indefinite. OK, so at the temperatures are at, nothing occurs, nothing happens. That's the goal. Like hundreds of years? Could be hundreds of years. Kim Swosey is among them. Diagnosed with brain cancer when she was 23, the neuroscience student was determined to be cryopreserved when she died. That was 11 years ago. Her brain is now suspended at minus 196 degrees here at Alcor in the hope that one day she might be revived. For Kim's brother, John Swosey, and her boyfriend, Josh Sisler, this room full of tanks is the closest thing they have to a cemetery. It's kind of crazy to think that she's in there. Probably sharing it with a lot of other people, huh? Yeah. It's, uh, I guess, nicer than a coffin or any other thing that I could think that she could have done. It's nice to visit and remember uh, that Kim was able to get what she wanted. I think the whole idea is cryopreservation is better than rotting or being cremated. And this is where it all happens. We're in the trauma room at Alcor. The process is a military-style operation. In fact, many of the medics on the team are former US Navy SEALs. The teams are deployed. What happens next? Generally, we look for about a two-hour window to deploy our team anywhere in the world. And when they deploy, they have to take specialized kits that you see in front of you. And these kits have things that don't exist pretty much anywhere else in the world. The teams are up against the clock. Again, you're trying to control the time to temperature and you're trying to have very little variance. So you don't want to have the body suddenly drop 50 degrees. Okay. 
The aim is to prepare the body for the antifreeze agent, a very expensive, unproven chemical called cryoperfusate. It's an experimental chemical. It doesn't exist anywhere else, really. And that is used to replace the blood in your body, and that prevents freezing of cells. For all this optimism about the possibility of life after death, the reality is much more subdued. There's no way the body, let alone the brain, can be adequately protected with the antifreeze. Clive Cohen is a world-renowned professor of neuroscience. At Britain's esteemed King's College in London, Professor Cohen teaches students the intricate workings of the brain, and he's extremely cynical about cryonics. Is there any way to pause the process of, of the brain dying? Somebody who has died, by definition, has a heart that can no longer be restarted, and therefore there is no way that the organ of our identity, the brain, can get that oxygen back in there again and, and, and keep the system functioning. Well, OK, yeah, we don't have evidence at work yet, right, in terms of the brain coming back. Right. Fully acknowledge that. Uh, but there's actually zero evidence that it won't work. And, and people are familiar with this in the terms of like IVF and an embryo. I mean, you have a human that's walking around that was the result of a similar liquid nitrogen kind of storage process. The, the difference is one of scale. When you get around to something like a whole body, or even just a whole brain, it's not just a matter of scale. So it's a completely different um, category from the matter of, of, of sperm and eggs and eight cell embryos. While the prospect of eternal life is clearly compelling to cryonics investors and members, Professor Cohen and many others in the science community are keenly waiting for evidence. I don't see how this exercise could make significant contributions to science. What would make a contribution to science would be if they could test the whole proposition in, in, a, in a small mammal first and show that it works. So what do you say then to your critics who say you're peddling false hope? To our critics who say we're peddling false hope, uh, hope I say don't do it. I'm not selling it to you. We're a nonprofit. I don't make extra money if you sign up. You have got to want to do this. I'm glad you finally made it out. Yeah, it's good to be back here. John Swosey and Josh Sisler are glad their beloved Kim made the choice to be cryopreserved. What would Kim be hoping for now? I mean, I think she'd be happy that we're hanging out and going to see her, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess there's two scenarios, one where she gets revived, and when she gets revived, I'm sure she's got to feel pretty cool about the decision that she made, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, told you. But there's also this scenario where she doesn't get revived, and in that scenario, what's the difference between that and what would have naturally happened? And also, she won't know. Right. I love you. Here in Australia, devotees of the nation's first cryonics facility, Alan and Barbara Peace, won't let the critics undermine their conviction or change the tune of their love song. They're determined to continue their adventures well beyond this life. You strike me as an incredible team, but there's no, uh, there's no till death do we part here. No, we'll be together holding hands like this forever, whichever way it goes. You look out across at the cemetery and go, oh, they're not coming back. They don't have any choice, none at all. We, we've got a, an option of coming back, and if it doesn't work, well, we won't know. But you'd rather be in the tank than in the ground. Oh, absolutely. yeah, absolutely in the tank, yeah. Got yeah. options then. Yeah, well, the future's unknown, but... Why not? It's exciting, you know. You don't, when you don't know, that's the excitement. That's the bit we like about it, hey, Bob? Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips 
every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.